Hi, this is Jim Kramer with our energy expert, Dan Dicker. Dan, it's been a little while. The last time we talked to you, oil was uh, plummeting. And you said, that's it, time to buy. And you gave us some growth names. And they have been by far the best performers in the market since we've seen you last. Right. What do we do now? Oh, I think they'll continue to be over the long haul. But I think it's time to take a break. Um, there's a lot of reasons why oil finds its limitation on the rally that it's had over the last uh, two weeks. Um, uh, one of them is redeterminations. I mean, the banks have come and, and decided whether credit lines on these shale companies are going to be taken mm -hmm. back to, to nothing. And in fact, they've kind of wussed out on this and decided to uh, maintain, the, for the most part, all of the revolver credit lines. Wow, that okay. means these shale companies continue to survive uh, for longer than we uh, thought. That means they continue to pump. That's a limitation on price right there. There's, there's other things, for example, the, uh, the commercials come in, and whenever they see a, a futures price over $50, they just gives them a chance to hedge right. and also raise capital, start right. raise capital and, and run the clock out again for another four to six months. It's not that $50 crude is a break-even point for most of these guys, right. but what it does do is it provides sort of that countervailing um, uh, hedge that they need in order to show banks and so forth that they continue to push credit into there, and then it increases their survivability again. And you, you get the impression from here that although we will not see prices again reach anywhere near, you know, the numbers that Goldman Sachs was talking about, that right. 20 handle or that right. 3 handle, we won't see that. What we also won't see is much above $50 for a while to come. Okay, uh, master limited partnerships were annihilated uh, at the end of the quarter. They've bounced back nicely. Uh, distinguish between natural gas oriented and oil, distinguish between toll road, non toll road? Yeah, I, you know, the way that I distinguish it, to tell you the truth, is the ones that, again, it's the same way as the ENPs. They're in a tremendous problem because obviously, as production drops, which it will over the next right. two years, there's less going through the pipes right. and the, the distributions are going to go down. And it's always been an interest rate based kind right. of business. So what I like is, and I've been told people to stay away from it. I think that the cycle, the down cycle in the in the in these in the MLPs is going to be worse for them as opposed to just about everybody else around. Right. But there is one that I tell them that is worth accumulating, and it's the same one I've talked about for maybe two years, and that's Rich Kinder's mm -hmm. company. Right. I think his turning into a C corp was a brilliant Kinder move. Morgan KMI. He has tons of cash, and he's already shown it. He's already bought some then infrastructure. Why are, like I read these different sites, and they say that he's go, he has to go take his target back. I am entirely on the other side of this from every other analyst. It seems everyone's down on Rich Kinder here. I think he's the guy, he's the horse you have to ride and ride and ride again. His stock was down to 30. I thought it was a tremendous value right. buy. It, I've never seen, you know, as a C Corp, he was paying over 7% there. It was incredible. It was very, the and best bargain I will, he has and, and I will tell you this outright. I bought a pile of it for my kids' trust. Oh, fantastic. I mean, that's, fantastic. so do you, do you want a better recommendation than that? I bought it for my kids. All right, so, uh, no, that's about as good as it gets. So just give a quick lightning round. Exxon, a little too high. I, I think it's it's fine here, but it's not something I would jump on. It's still my favorite U.S. major. Uh, Chevron, worry about dividend? No, oh, very much so. I'm not I'm not on board with Chevron, and I have they still have problems with Brazil and what's going on down there. You know, I, I would rather leave Chevron out. Royal Dutch, very uh, headachey, right? Too, yeah, and and too involved in natural gas, and of course they had that horrible deal in Alaska, yeah, that, yeah. that dry well. Uh, EOG. Love them. You'll never okay. see them again at 70 like you did three weeks ago. But okay. if you see them at 80. Simrex. Take it back. Again, you'll never see them back at 100 where the value never. was. But if you, if, you, cow. if you see them back down at 110, you know, take take some. Uh, we like Oxy on a yield basis. Nah, not mine. It's okay. yours. That's, that's, that's your and, guy. And then uh, just in general, uh, natural gas. Uh, has been up lately, uh, short-lived, cold? Uh, I think it's a very long-term turnaround of a very bearish trend on natural gas. Not time to get involved yet big time on the, on the dedicated natural gas players. But I think there's going to be some value there, and it's going to be huge. But it's, it's still, I, I'd, I'd rather not talk about natural gas now. Leave something for the second half of 2016. I think that's when the value is going to really hit. Thank you so much, Dan Digger.